This video shows how we built an unbeatable pine wood derby racer. First off, remove the block, wheels, and axles from the box to inspect the quality of the materials. If anything looks cracked, bent, or broken, get another set immediately. Next, draw out your design on a piece of paper. Aerodynamics play a small part in speed, so try to make sure the, the front of your racer is sleek as possible. Looking at your block, you will notice the, that the slots for the axles are in different locations. The rear axle should be the slot closest to the edge of the block. This will help with the weight location and center of gravity. At this point, take one of the axles and carefully hammer it into its slots to within a quarter inch of the block. Then using a set of pliers, carefully remove the axle and repeat on all sides. This will allow you to easily insert them later. When it comes to the wheels and axles, I purchased a set from a local hobby store that was already polished so, so to save on some of the work. But if you keep the stock axles, you will need to sand and polish away any rough edges on each axle. This lowers the friction it has with the wheels. Now transfer your design from the paper to the block of wood. Be careful when cutting because it is easy to break the block if you are removing large portions of wood. Now here's a tip. If you have access to a table saw and a bench grinder, this process can be much quicker. Once your block is cut, make sure to sand down all rough edges. Now it is time to add weight. This is one of the vital steps to a fast racer. The position of the weight is extremely important. The weights need to be added at the rear axle. By keeping the weight at the rear, will allow gravity to continue to pull your racer at the bottom of the curved track. And while your competition will appear to slow down, your racer will appear to keep accelerating. Watch this video closely. Oh, wow. Now when adding weight, make sure to keep a majority of it just in front of the rear axle so your racer does not lift the front wheels on a small bump. Otherwise, it can pop a wheelie and come off the track. On our racer, we wanted to look, make it look as clean as possible. So we drilled three holes in the side of the body to insert weight within. This not only helped with the appearance, but it allowed us to use a few extras to give it that dragster look. Now, when it comes to adding extras to your racer, make sure to keep them small and at the rear. Now it is time to paint, but before you do, make sure to protect the axle slots with some tape. As you can see, there is a large section without paint, and there is a good reason. This area will get a helping of graphite. Graphite is a very slick, dry lubricant, and is strongly recommended. After the paint is dry, lightly coat the bare wood, each axle, and inside each wheel center with some graphite. This will greatly improve the rotation of the wheels. It is now time to assemble your racer. After fully assembled, you will need to weigh the car. Unless your rules are different, the race car cannot weigh more than 5 ounces. If you do not have a scale, you can go to the local post office or grocery store and ask to use their scales. Most of the time they are happy to help out. At this point, if you need to add more weight, you will need to get some flat weights to attach to the underside of the racer. Some of these screw in and some of them glue on, but that is up to you what you would like to do. It is a good idea to keep your racer close to the maximum weight without going over. Ours weighed 4.7 ounces, which is just shy of the 5 ounce mark, but we wanted to make sure it was just under just in case the scales we were using were slightly different than the scales that were at the track. Now you are ready to dominate your race. Have fun!